Welcome to GameSpot Live. I'm Greg Kasavin here to discuss Onimusha 2 Samurai's Destiny for the PlayStation 2. Uh, it's the sequel to a game that came out last year, uh, and it's a game that certainly deserved an encore because it's about a uh, soul-stealing samurai fighting lots of demons in medieval Japan. That's, that's a pretty cool premise, uh, so the sequel was inevitable. And uh, sort of like the Castlevania series, uh, it's really just a retelling of the original story. Uh, once again, you play this uh, lone samurai swordsman who must defeat the, the evil, uh, demonic, resurrected warlord Nobunaga who ransacked his town and is causing havoc throughout Japan. Uh, so it's up to you to stop him. In addition to the plot, the game has still more in common uh, with its predecessor. It, it basically plays the same, um, and it, it's of similarly short length, and basically will be a familiar experience to those who played and enjoyed the first game. Uh, at the same time, those players, as well as uh, newcomers to Onimusho, will, will find that the game does suffer from uh, certain problems that, that hold it back a little. Um, and, uh, you know, they'll wish that the game was ultimately uh, a bit better and, and a bit longer, uh, though they'll really appreciate the, the really outstanding production values uh, throughout the game from beginning to end. Throughout most of Onimusha 2, you play as Jubei Yagyu, who is uh, the samurai who whose town is destroyed at the beginning of the game in, in this really impressive uh, pre-rendered cutscene. Um, he'll meet up with four different uh, adventurers along the course of his journey, and sometimes these guys will fight at his side, and at other occasions you may even get to control them, uh, w which is nice, although they control uh, pretty similarly to Jubei, even though they have different moves. You'll either be used to the controls in the game, or there'll be something that'll really frustrate you, because once again, uh, Capcom is uh, stubbornly refusing to uh, allow the player to use analog controls and you're stuck with kind of the classic Resident Evil control scheme where you push left and right on the digital pad to rotate your character and push up on the pad to run forward and back to retreat. Um, it's an awkward system if you've never used it before or uh, you'll be uh, familiar with it from previous games uh, but nonetheless it, it seems like a game that's action-packed and, and actually rather fast-paced like Onimusha 2, should have had analog control. Nevertheless, you'll find that uh, the controls, once you get used to them, are pretty responsive. And although you can get through much of Onimusha 2 just by hammering on the square button to slash repeatedly, the game actually rewards you for using some finesse. Uh, for instance, if you slash at an opponent just as he's about to hit you, you, you can execute this critical strike that kills the enemy in a single blow. The action is fast and smooth, uh, but one thing that gets in the way is the fact that Onimusha 2 plays like the Resident Evil game, so the camera angle uh, arbitrarily switches as you move from scene to scene. Um, sometimes it'll set you up in a position where you can't see where the enemy attacks are coming from, or uh, you'll have a bad perspective on the action. Uh, this can be particularly troublesome in, in boss battles, where sometimes you won't know where the enemy is going to hit you from. And actually, the boss battles, uh, compared to the rest of the game, are really quite tough. Unlike the previous game, Onimusha 2 is actually pretty easy starting out, though it does get hard when you run into the first couple of boss encounters. Uh, after you die a few times, the game all but begs you to switch to the easy difficulty mode, at which point the game becomes a cakewalk, so uh, you'd better off not uh, switch to the easy mode and stick to normal and get a little more life out of the, out of the thing. Still, all told, it'll take you probably about uh, 10 hours or less to get all the way through the game. It's a short journey, but there's a good blend of action and, and kind of cinematics as you go on through. Uh, the, the game's 3D character models look really, really good, and, and so do the, the various static scenes you'll go through. It's, it's just a really fabulous looking game, uh, just, just fun to look at. Uh, the enemy characters are, are creative and fun to watch. The animation is all motion captured and, and looks terrific. And you'll see some really nice uh, cutscenes, both using the game's engine and also uh, pre-rendered ones, like, like at the beginning. Then again, there's plenty to fight. You'll, you'll literally fight hundreds of monsters uh, before you get to the end of the game, so this isn't a slow and plotting game like some of the Resident Evils. It really is all about action. Although Onimusha 2 sounds really good for the most part, one real problem with it is the English voice acting. In the previous games, you had the option of uh, playing the games with Japanese speech, which was really great because, you know, there are these games that take place in feudal Japan anyway, 
it seems only natural that the characters speak in their native language, and you're probably interested in Onimusha because it's this game about samurai. Uh, it's not like uh, the Japanese language is going to turn you off. For some reason, though, there's no Japanese option in Onimusha 2. You're stuck listening to English, and it's bad English at that. Other than that, it's certainly easy to recommend Onimusha 2 if you like the previous game, since they're so similar. Once again, the, the challenge is to run around while, uh, while defeating your opponents, but then you also have to absorb their souls after you've beaten them. Uh, it makes for some interesting gameplay that, that's really just a lot more exciting than, than some of the gameplay you may be used to from other survival horror games. This really isn't a survival horror game at all. It's more of an action-adventure similar to games like Devil May Cry. Since the game is pretty short, there's actually some good incentive to re replay it multiple times. Uh, there's a harder difficulty level, which will definitely be a challenge for you. And there's some cool extras that you can unlock. And since the gameplay itself is basically fun, there's reason to play through more than once. Uh, the extras are pretty funny. Um, there, there's some traditional stuff like art galleries, but also some mini games you could play uh, that, that can be pretty enjoyable. All in all, Onimusha 2 sticks pretty closely to the formula of its predecessor, but it tells an original story, uh, looks a lot better than the previous game, and like the previous game, it's, it's basically just fun to play for the short duration that it lasts. Uh, if you like the previous game, you should certainly check it out, and if you missed uh, the first Onimusha, then it's also worth taking a look at Onimusha 2, which, uh, if nothing else, is just really a, a, an example of a really gorgeous PlayStation 2 game.